Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Today what I want to do is revisit a really old project of mine. Um, a couple of years ago, I think, um, we put together this thing, uh, which is a hydrogen generator, an electrolytic hydrogen generator. So we um, fill this PVC pipe chamber with sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, we have nickel electrodes which sit in the solution and by passing current through the cell uh, we're able to generate hydrogen gas and oxygen gas off the cathode and anode respectively. Now this was a relatively good design. Um, I had a piece of fabric um, in between the two electrodes to stop the two gases from mixing and the nickel electrodes that we were using uh, did an excellent job at not corroding under the oxidizing conditions of the anode potential. I have used it a couple of times and it has worked uh, for what it was intended to do, make hydrogen gas and oxygen for that matter. Um, however, the efficiency of this thing isn't great. Since we have a relatively large distance between uh, the anode and the cathode, the resistance of the cell is higher than I'd like. Um, we were able, I think from memory, uh, to put a few amps through this thing at 5 volts but in my opinion, I think this thing looks a little bit clunky um, and I think we can do a much better job in terms of efficiency uh, if we build something a little bit smaller than this. Now, if I really wanted to generate hydrogen with a super high efficiency, what I could do is build uh, what's called, I think, a dry cell. Those things are capable of generating a lot of hydrogen at a very high efficiency. However, to build one of them, you need a fair bit of stainless steel and it's a little bit tricky to get the whole thing to uh, seal and separate the hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, so I'm not going to bother. I'm not that good at engineering and I don't really need that much hydrogen anyway. So what I actually want to build is something with a moderate efficiency. I'm thinking maybe we want to be able to put 10 amps through the cell at 5 volts or maybe 5 amps through the cell at 3.3 volts, something like that. Um, and I want it to be convenient to put together. And that's what we've got set up today. What I'm currently thinking, um, instead of having this big ugly thing with two whole separate chambers for the hydrogen and oxygen, I'm thinking we can just have one of these chambers. Uh, so what I've got here is a PVC pipe cut in half. And what we can do is if we get a couple of pieces of acrylic, uh, we can separate the two halves of the PVC pipe so that we can have hydrogen and oxygen generated separately and then have our gases taken off separately as well. So ideally, if I seal it right, there'll be no mixing of the gases. Now, of course, uh, we can't actually generate hydrogen and oxygen if the two chambers aren't connected in some way. Uh, so you can see in the pieces of acrylic that we have separated our chambers with, I put a hole in here. And what we're gonna do is put a small piece of fabric um, just between those two pieces and that will prevent any gases mixing uh, between the two chambers, hopefully. The material that we're going to use uh, to separate the two chambers is microfiber because it's a very finely woven fabric uh, which will easily stop any bubbles from transferring between the two chambers. Um, and it's made out of polyester and nylon, uh, which is ideal because they don't really react or break down in the presence of sodium hydroxide, which is the electrolyte that we're going to be using. So overall, it's going to look something like this in the end. Uh, of course, it'll be all sealed when I'm done. Um, the two chambers are separated by the acrylic, as you can see, and we'll have our electrodes going in the sides, our gas takeoff maybe up the top. I don't know, we'll work that out while I build it. I think that'll be relatively nice, pretty efficient. Uh, it's got a nice small form factor, so I think it should work quite well. All right, that's the first step done. Um, I've got those two pieces of acrylic uh, sealed together with the piece of microfiber cloth in between them as our separator. Um, the next step is to uh, put on the next parts of the cell in order to make the two chambers for the hydrogen and oxygen. And then there we are, the next step. I'm now sealing uh, the PVC onto that acrylic separator if we look down through there, you can see the two separate chambers. Uh, you can see the fabric separator separating the two halves. And I've also prepared uh, our electrodes. I just took the nickel out of the previous hydrogen generator. Um, what I've done here is just 
folded up the ends so that we have a nice high surface area down here. This is the bit that's going to be right next to uh, the fabric separator. Um, we will put these um, straight into the cell just like that and then eventually uh, once I actually put them in there they'll be sitting nicely uh, close together so that we can get a nice high current between the hydrogen and oxygen sides. Finally there we go it's all sealed uh, we have the left and right chambers sealed up completely we have the top sealed on the bottom sealed on um, we've got both electrodes positive and negative um, down into each of the chambers. I've drilled a hole in the side so that we can fill the thing up with solution and we have our two output tubes for the hydrogen and oxygen gases that we'll be generating. The only thing left to do now is to fill it up with water and double check that we uh, don't actually have any leaks. I'm pretty much positive that we don't because I've used a vast excess of this PVC solvent glue uh, to seal up the whole thing but we'll check anyway because that's the smart thing to do. Um, then I will solder some wires onto our nickel strips and then we can finally get to making some hydrogen and oxygen gases. So as it appears there are no leaks uh, in our device which is good and I have determined that the total volume um, of the chamber that we need to fill it up to is around about 60 milliliters. So I've prepared here a 25% solution of sodium hydroxide, 60 milliliters of it, and I will transfer this solution into our chamber here uh, through the hole that I've drilled, uh, just using a pipette. Alrighty, now that is filled with our solution and I have covered over uh, the filling hole with a piece of duct tape. Um, all we're gonna do now is put it into a cooling bath because this thing is probably going to get hot uh, when we actually perform our electrolysis. And then finally, connecting up the whole system uh, to 3.3 volts from a computer power supply um, with an amateur in series so we can see how much current we can actually push through uh, this electrolyzer. Uh, we will turn on the current and see if it actually works. Wow. As you can see, uh, initially, uh, at 3.3 volts, we can push around 4 amps through the cell, which is actually a lot more than I was expecting. Um, that current should even increase as the cell heats up, because we are pushing 12 watts through it currently, even more than that. I'm also leading the gases into a couple of beakers full of water, uh, so that we can see the production rate. You can see this is the hydrogen. Uh, on the right hand side is our negative electrode, so our hydrogen comes out on the right hand side here. Uh, we are generating quite a bit of gas there. Uh, and oxygen, of course, is being generated at half the rate. You can see that for every two bubbles that the right hand side makes with the hydrogen, uh, we only get around one bubble for the oxygen. Now, what I really want to know is how well will this thing run at five volts? Because at a higher voltage, we're able to put more current through the cell and the current is what determines the gas rate of production. Uh, so applying five volts should drastically increase the amount of gas that we get. So we'll give that a go now. Okay, five volts, watch the amateur and we will see how much current we get. Wow. At five volts, it looks like we get a whole nine and a half, nearly 10 amps, which gives us a lot of hydrogen. Look at that, holy moly. The oxygen rate of production has also increased now that we've uh, pumped it up to 10 amps. Uh, it is, as we expect, still half of the gas production of the hydrogen. But overall, that is a lot of gas being generated. Well, look at that. After just a minute of allowing the cell to run at 5 volts, uh, the 50 watts that we're putting through the cell has heated it up to the point where now we're allowing a lot more current to flow. We've got 11 amps after just a minute. I'm not really uh, a fan of that happening. I think I'm going to put it back to 3.3 volts. Um, if we let that run away to too high of a temperature, I'm worried that these wires won't be big enough uh, to run the full maybe 15 amps that might flow through in the end. And we also don't want to make the cell too warm. Uh, that is a very concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide in there, and we don't want that to spill everywhere. Yes, I think 5 amps at 3.3 volts is a nice rate of production. 
As a matter of fact, running it at a lower voltage also increases the efficiency of the process, or at least the energy efficiency, uh, because technically only 1.23 volts uh, worth of the total voltage that you put across the cell can actually go towards the chemical reaction of generating hydrogen and oxygen. So 3.3 volts, um, 1.23 volts is a larger fraction of that total voltage than when we run it at 5 volts. Anyway, what I want to do now is grab a couple of plastic bags and tie them onto the ends of our tubing and see if we can fill them up with our hydrogen and oxygen that we're generating. Once we've filled up a bag of hydrogen, of course, because it's lighter than air, it should actually float. Alrighty, with the cell running at 5 amps, it should take no time at all, just a few hours to fill up our bags with our hydrogen and oxygen that we're generating. Well, there we are, hydrogen and oxygen made by electrolysis of water. Uh, you can see we have enough hydrogen now uh, that it is trying, at least, uh, to get off the ground and float. So I think we've got enough of the gases for our initial test. I will disconnect those and turn off the cell, and then we will examine how everything went. And there we are. As you can see, we have enough hydrogen such that our plastic bag actually floats off the ground. Very cool. So yes, after about five hours of electrolysis at four and a half amps, 3.3 volts, uh, we have filled these bags with the two gases. Um, we expected to obtain about twice as much hydrogen as we did oxygen. Um, you can see that there is more hydrogen in our bag on the right than there is oxygen in our bag on the left here. Um, however, it's not quite a ratio of two to one, it looks like. Um, that's probably because hydrogen is such a small molecule that it can actually escape our plastic bag quite easily. So we lose a fair bit of it in the process. We possibly generated quite a bit more hydrogen than we see here, but a large part of it did actually escape. Now that that's all done, uh, a couple of things that we have noted um, from actually running the cell in practice. First of all is something that I didn't consider when building the thing. Uh, but it is actually very important, especially when we're running um, at such a high current. That is the fact that we are actually destroying the water, or not destroying, but converting the water into hydrogen and oxygen at a non-negligible rate. So we're actually going to run out of water inside the chamber um, quite quickly, actually. At around 5 amps running through the cell, um, it turns out we actually lose a few millilitres of water every hour, which when we only have 60 millilitres of solution in the chamber to begin with, uh, that's actually quite a significant loss. So if we were to run this for, I don't know, 10 hours, uh, we might actually start losing a significant portion of our solution. Pretty easy to solve the problem though. Um, when I run this cell in the future, all I'm gonna have to do is um, check up on it periodically every few hours and top it up with some distilled water. That'll be especially important if I decide to run it at five volts and at that 10 amps that we were seeing initially. The second thing uh, is a design feature that I probably should have added from the start, but I just couldn't be bothered doing it. I was excited to actually run the cell and check whether it worked. Um, that is adding a couple of bubblers on the side of the cell uh, so that we can see the gas flow rate of the hydrogen and oxygen as they come out of the cell and also to act as a flashback arrester for the hydrogen uh, just in case any of the hydrogen ignites. We don't want uh, the ignition reaching its way all the way into the chamber because that would be a disaster. Not that the hydrogen would ignite just on its own anyway, but it's good to be safe. But before we finish up for the day, there is of course one other famous experiment with hydrogen that we can do, and that is to get a bunch of soapy water and make a whole bunch of bubbles with it. And then once we have some bubbles, they are of course flammable. I know you wanted to see me light off the big bag, but no, that's not happening. 
And just as a final note, you can see this is the electrolyte now that I've removed it from the cell and we have a little over 40 milliliters left. So we were right on the fact that the water was being destroyed uh, by the cell. We started with 60 milliliters and we destroyed over 10 milliliters of that. So we are gonna have to think about that uh, in the future when we run the cell. But anyway, that is that. Uh, we've finished our hydrogen generator. I'm happy with how it works. I'm happy with how it runs. All it needs are a couple of bubblers for the hydrogen and oxygen gases uh, as they come out of the chamber. But that is pretty much completely finished. So see you later.